the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a very special day for the church as we commemorate the Eucharist. It's also a special day for me personally. Uh, it was on this day that I celebrated my first Mass nine years ago uh, on the Feast of Corpus Christi. So uh, what a beautiful day to celebrate a first Mass uh, as we honor the Eucharist. Today we celebrate God's gracious gift of abundance to us in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the abundant gift of God to us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you nourish us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to give to each other as you have given to us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthian. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you will claim the death of the Lord until he comes again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As far as I can tell, St. Paul only quotes Jesus one time in all of his writings. So he writes about Jesus, he certainly proclaims the death and the resurrection of Jesus, he expands upon the teaching of Jesus, he does a lot of theology, he was uh, was very well educated, he knew the scripture well, he knew uh, how to talk about God, and he he, uh, used that to talk about Jesus. So certainly he talks a lot about Jesus, a lot of theology, death and resurrection, but I think, as far as I can tell, there's only one time that he actually quotes the words of Jesus. And that's today in the reading that we just heard from his first letter to the Corinthians. He takes the bread, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to them saying, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. That's in quotation marks in the text. And I think it's the only place that it happens in St. Paul. Uh, And I think that's just really, really, really important. That of all the things he could have quoted, this is what he chooses to quote to the Corinthians. He wants them to know how important and how significant it is. He uses Jesus' own words at that moment. Uh, And this is, uh, it just shows how, how, how important, how significant this is for the Christian community. These words, this is my body, this is my blood. As early as St. Paul is writing, this is already well established in the Christian imagination. Uh, And remember, St. Paul was writing before the Gospels were even written. Um, He's writing these letters because he's preaching to these communities and then he's sending letters back to encourage them. Uh, And also, the way in which St. Paul uh, writes this also shows how how significant it is. He says, I receive from the Lord what I also handed on to you. I receive from the Lord what I also handed on to you. That's actually... um, a formulation of a rabbinical teaching. That's how a rabbi would teach something official. I receive what I've also handed on to you. So he is, as a rabbi now, that's his training, remember, he's a rabbi. As a rabbi, as a teacher, trained in the ways of passing on the faith, he shares this great message, and he quotes Jesus. This is my body, this is my blood. Now, all that is to say that we should take very seriously what St. Paul says that Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood. It's not a symbol, it's not just some cute little practice that the early Christians are doing. They believe from the beginning that this 
truly is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. For 2,000 years, Christians have believed that the bread and the wine are not symbolic, they're not just some nice ritual. The bread and the wine truly become the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. There's another a part of this that for me also as a priest has a lot of significance, uh, and it's from the gospel. Uh, the disciples are sort of moaning, you know, there's, there's, we're in a deserted place, send these people away so they can go find some food because it's deserted and we've got nothing here. Jesus says, give them something to eat, you do it, take care of it. And they realize that they really can't, they really have no power uh, to do this. So Jesus steps in, he has the power and he takes care of it. So as a priest, I feel like those disciples, I look around at the world around us and I feel like we're in a deserted place. Uh, you know, that the, the faith seems to be diminishing and it feels deserted at times, like we're walking in a desert. And Jesus tells me and, and my brother priest, you give them something to eat, feed my people, take care of my people. And I can't say, oh no, Jesus, just send them away, send them somewhere else. It's my job in the power of Jesus to feed his people. And it's one of the great privileges of the priesthood that we can call down the Holy Spirit upon simple bread and wine in this deserted place and all of a sudden have the true body and blood of our Lord so that he may continue to feed his people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the Eucharist, the Father nourishes his people with his beloved Son. Let us pray to our loving Father for all the needs of the world. For the priests of the church, that they may continue to offer the gifts of the people of God faithfully, like Melchizedek did of old, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share in the celebration of the Eucharist, that they may appreciate more deeply the real presence of Jesus Christ in this sacrament, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by starvation in soul or body, that the Eucharistic Church may help to meet their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who listen to this televised Mass, that hungering for Christ, the living bread come down from heaven, they may be blessed by God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that through the Eucharistic sacrifice, they may come to eternal life with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most generous Father, you provide for all our needs with the sublime gift of your Son in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. Receive our prayers through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of, his, of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song and adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thanks be to God.